All right, guys. So Athena and I, we're going to start doing some product reviews for you. And as, even though it might hurt some people's feelings, we're going to keep it real. So if we do a product review and we like the item, we'll tell you that we liked it. If it's something that is honestly it's a junk and it's a waste of your money, we're going to let you guys know. So there's nothing more that I hate when you do all kinds of research and you plan on buying something and you buy it and it's a piece of junk and it's not worth the money that you paid for it. So today we're going to bring a review of a pocket knife. It's the Cold Steel Finwolf. Now I've only had this pocket knife for about a month, but I've been using it every day. So this pocket knife, give or take a little bit, you can find it for about 60 bucks. I actually found it on eBay for 45 bucks with free shipping. So I thought that was a really good deal. So my initial opening the, the pocket knife up and looking at it, I kind of looked at the fit and finish of the, of the knife. The scales of the handle, you can see there's a little bit of a void where the scales connect to the back of the locking mechanism. And then you could also look at the pins in the, in the scales. And there's a little bit of a void there. So initially when I first seen that, I was kind of like, well, for a $45 knife, I, I'd say that's expected a little bit. So then I looked at the clip of the blade, the screws on there, and so far using the clip every day for about a month, this clip is really strong, it hasn't bent, it stays in place where I put it. So far it's really good. The locking mechanism works really well, have zero issues with the locking mechanism. And then the blade itself, so the, the finish of the blade, the quality of the grinds, the symmetricalness of the Scandi Zero grind on here, everything is pretty much perfect on this blade. I got zero issues with this blade. So then you could Google this knife and you could find out some more technical specs. But we're going to kind of keep it real here. The handle length itself. Is about 4 inches and 5 eighths. The total blade length. Is about 3 and 3 eighths. And then the total knife length. comes in at right at eight inches. So the feel of this knife in your hand, so far, I really like it. There's no hot spots on here. It's easy to grab. This textured uh, knife handle material that they use, it really sticks to your hand good. I've used it with wet hands, sweaty palms. It hasn't slipped on me. Really feels good. You could choke up on the blade if you need to do some more finding, finer tasks with it. It's got a good reverse grip and a thumb cap. You can put your thumb on there. I really like that. It feels good and strong in the hand. So well, the sharpness of the blade right out of the box when I first got it was absolutely razor sharp. Zero complaints. Uh, if you look when the light hit it just right, you could see a little bit of a buffering on the edge of the blade where they buffered it or buffed it when they sharpened it. But right out of the box, it was razor sharp, cut paper, you could shave with it. Everything you would expect out of a blade when you purchased it. So we'll do a before and after use here. But if you zoom in, I've sharpened this blade already, but it shaves hair right now. So it's razor sharp. Let's go ahead and cut a few things with this. So this piece of wood here, this is green wood, but it's a piece of poplar. We're gonna go ahead and make a tent stake out of this piece of wood.
pocket knife goes. I'm not a big believer in batoning with a pocket knife. I really think you need a full tang blade to be able to do that with. But we're gonna go ahead and do a little batoning here. So we're gonna build a tent stake here. So we're gonna come about an inch down from the top of this stake. We're gonna baton straight into it. We're gonna shoot for doing about a third of the thickness of this piece of stick here. And we're gonna make an L7 notch, but this is our stop cut here. That's about a third of the way. So another thing you could do, so we have our L7 notch put in there. So you could come through and we'll put a little bevel on the top of this stake here. What this bevel is gonna do is when you start putting your stake in, you're pounding it with your hatchet or your hammer or another stick to baton it with. It's gonna help you from splitting there. And also, you know, we made our stop cut here. This cut that comes in here, I'm trying to do it at about a 45 degree angle. So then if you keep this 45 degree angle here and we bring it up here, we'll try to match those two angles. But that way when you're hitting it, if you have a strike of your hatchet that just clips the front of it, it'll glance off here versus cracking this whole piece out. And then you'll have to make a whole new tent stake there. So, so far that tent stake there and the cold steel fin wolf, no problem. We'll go ahead and cut some rope with it. Now this rope here, this is actually just from Walmart. This is like 350 pound tensile catfish rope. Slices right through it, zero issues. So I brought a little bit of fat wood with us today. This is a pretty small piece, but we'll go ahead and baton it out a little bit. is important one your knife has to be sharp when you start your project but you also want that blade to retain its edge so we've cut a we've cut the rope we've cut the fat wood we made some feathers with a poplar wood here we did our tent stake let's check that edge out now since we have our little uh pile of feathers here 
Let's go ahead and start a fire up.